developmental story of Zimbabwe is never complete without the rural factor being included. It's high time that Zimbabwean masses understood that making it in business or any other enterprise is not solely hinged on city lights, but the rural communities too. If anything, some of the most successful enterprises find their niche in the dusty roads outside major cities. Such is the story of Mr. Tandukwa, who created a niche in engineering services in the rural area of Bonongwe, with an ultimate goal of creating a business district in his local home. So today we are in Bonongwe, where we came to see a man that is doing amazing things by bringing industrialization to the rural areas of Zimbabwe. Mr. Tsanduk, how are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? This is Mr. Tsandukwa. He has brought his machinery, equipment out here to Bonongwe, where he's undertaking serious industrialization in the rural areas of Zimbabwe. And I'm going to hand it over to him for him to tell us what it is that they're doing here and the industrial equipment that they've got here and what they are producing here. Mr. Bonongwe, how are you? And tell us what is it that you are doing here and what are you manufacturing here? We, we brought uh, Confide Engineering, uh, which started in 2013 in Harare. We started this company at a, at a house in Greencroft. Right. Then it grew, and uh, three years ago, I decided that I want to bring it here, where I've got a six hectares land that was allocated. Right. So, uh, as I wanted uh, to, to do farming, I saw that it was uh, impractical for me to travel to Harare every day to go to Confide Engineering. So I thought I should bring these things together. <laughs> so I'm doing farming, and at the same time I acquired this land where we did build this factory. So all our production for Confide Engineering is now happening from this place. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. What are you manufacturing here at Confide Engineering? We manufacture butchery equipment, uh, all catering equipment, uh, hospital equipment, uh, then school furniture. We also do fencing. All the fence that you see here is done here. Really? Yes. When you say you are manufacturing um, hospital equipment, what hospital equipment are you producing? Hospital beds. Uh, I've got a brochure here which shows you uh, most of the products that we manufacture. Right. Of course, uh, uh, less of this one which we import. But otherwise, hospital beds, delivery beds, um, chairs. Chairs. Uh, wheelchairs. Not wheelchairs at the, at the moment, but just the chairs. Yeah. Ordinary chairs there. Uh, desks, tables, and uh, benches. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. And then I see you also do bins. Yes. And what are these? Pressure cookers? These are pressure cookers, but we import these. I see. Uh, these three we import. Yes. But otherwise, uh, most of the things that are here, we... I saw, I saw electric, uh, electric uh, boards. Yes. You also seem to do that as well? Yes. We have got a wonderful product that we manufacture from here, which is uh, the industrial cooker. The industrial you cooker. You shall see it in the restaurant. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So maybe let's have, a, let's have a journey into the um, factory and let's see what it is that you guys are doing there. Yeah. Yeah. We are then invited into the very well-equipped factory where Mr. Tsandukwa shows us some of the products that he makes from scratch. It's absolutely amazing to see that he's got industrial stoves, industrial fridges, gas cookers, pots, chip makers, grills, furniture for hospitals, furniture for schools, door frames, window frames. He is manufacturing almost anything that you can think about in engineering terms. And in the factory are machines like plasma cutters, benders, and all sorts of machines that he uses to produce the wonders that he produces. This is a plasma cutter. It's a very big machine. This one. So it operates uh, with the, the computer there. So we draw the, uh, we, 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 we just do our, our drawing. 
Like in this case, we wanted to write a group view instead, like that, then we do this design. So we draw this on a computer. Then we come and connect it there. Then this machine now cuts according to the drawing. Right, right. It cuts a uh, metal as if it's cutting paper. Wow. Yeah. How is it doing it? Laser? Yeah, it's, uh, it's called a plasma. Plasma cutter. A plasma cutter. Yeah. Right. So, at the moment, we were making this. So, you can see we were cutting this. Uh, with the plasma cutter? With the plasma cutter. So, you need a plasma cutter to make these, uh, these rakes? Of these rakes, you see. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. And this is some of, some of the machinery that you moved from Harare. We moved it from Harare. To come here? To come here. Absolutely unbelievable. So you can see from there, this sheet that we have shows, where, shows you where we did cut from. Okay. So you, you, are, you are cutting your rakes, your hose, yes. and... Um, this is a small tobacco hole. This is a small tobacco hole. Oh, so it's coming from there. From that. So we just place a metal sheet there. Then, then the, the design begins. Now, the, the machine will now cut according to the drawing that we have put on the, on the system. Amazing stuff. So we are now producing this for hardware in the country. So according to what Mr. Sandukwa is saying is that this laser cutter cuts out of metal sheets. Mm. One of the most important reasons why we need manize to continue or to begin to produce iron in Zimbabwe. Yes. So that you can then begin to cut that very same iron sheet to produce these holes. This is also produced here and then it is welded and attached to that. Mm. Same thing as the rake. They uh, cut that with this plasma cutter and then they produce the rake head and then they will shape it and then attach it to that all this is steel and iron that produces that and that is a bigger hole he says that this is a tobacco hole yeah. and what is that one that so uh, maybe it's just useful way but you want to uh, maybe dig a hole yes to this size or Yes, right. Then this is a normal hole. A normal hole. And I'll assume that you can also make X's and everything else in yes. the same way. Yes. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. And that is made possible by the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter. You can also see that we are making distribution boards. Yes. Uh, we make door frames. Yes. We use the plasma cutter. And window frames as well, I saw. Window frames, where there is a type that we can use with the plasma cutter. Yes. We are not yet doing it. Yes. But at the moment, we are making from steel that we buy straight. Yeah. Where, where are you getting your steel from currently? We are buying from Marari. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, steel suppliers in Marari. Yes. But our problem is that in terms of door frames, we, we have got capacity to manufacture about 350 door frames per day here. But our problem is that uh, in terms of our procurement of steel, it's very expensive to procure steel in Zimbabwe. So in the end, our doctor becomes more costly. Than our competitors who are importing from us. Got you. Otherwise, what we were supposed to do now was Zimbabwe was no longer supposed to be importing dolphins. We were actually supposed to be exporting them. What is making our door frames expensive? The procurement of steel. The procurement of steel from outside. And so this is one of the most important reasons why we need Manize, which is going to be the biggest steel plant in Africa to produce steel so that we continue to produce this door frames, window frames at a cheaper price than we are importing because it's important for us to produce and export our own material to continue the industrialization process. And steel, as you can see, guys, is the beginning of industrialization. So I'm assuming you can produce 
hose you can produce but you can then therefore produce discs even for the uh, plows and the agricultural equipment yeah. Yeah. so steel is a very important part of our, our, our are the machines working today today they are not working yes to the that we now have almost two weeks without electricity two weeks without electricity yes. what is the problem uh, once it rains then electricity goes right and when it comes back sometimes the phase is not working we use three phases here <coughs> sometimes we have electricity there but the three phases is not working and last week, we, we had, when we were restored to back to electricity, there was a pole that went down there in the bush. Then they took over a week to sort it out. So these are the challenges of trying to undertake industry and having a factory in yeah, rural yeah, areas. Rural. Show me some of your other machines that you've got. Our, our building is done here. Yeah. That's the bending of the, done by this machine. Done by this machine. Before the first step. It's called the? First step. Press break. Yes. Okay. So we, we were supplied by a company called SIM in Nigel, Johannesburg. Yes. Yeah. So this press break, that's where we bend most of our things uh, We have made it, it, it is automatic. In, in, we are very large offense. It, it's automatic in terms of uh, the, the distance where we need to bend and it is. So it also uses three phase electricity and it's uh, not functioning at the moment because of, it. of no electricity. Yeah. So for you to be able to be producing elements like this, you need highly industrialized equipment. Yes. Like this. Okay. Like the laser oh, cut. Okay. Like, uh, yes, in, I see. In terms of door frame manufacturing, we've actually shortened the process. Uh, other companies in Zimbabwe, they've got a very long chain of the process. But we have introduced the, the, the plasma cutter, which lessens most of the work. And does that make your door frames cheaper? It must do that because this, uh, the, we cut on labor and the other processes. Right. So, in as much as we want people to be employed, mm -hmm. this cuts the cost, it cuts the labor, mm -hmm. makes the door frames cheaper, right. and has allowed you basically to use industrialization mm -hmm. and automation yeah. to make things cheaper for your people around. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. What are we doing here? Here we are, these are just pieces that we are making for maybe the I'll show you the other here. So you said, what is this? This one is an extractor. When we are in a restaurant, we want the fumes from the stoves to go out. So this is the extraction for our restaurant. Right. So we make this for restaurants. So this is for the fumes that are in the restaurant. Yes. It takes it out. It takes out. So that's the one that's overhead. Yes. When they are On, cooking. Yes. Uh, it's it's overhead, the, the cooker. Right, right, yes. right. And so, so you are making it. Right. You are making it here. Yeah, from scratch. You then put fans inside? Yes. Interesting. Then also ducts like those. Those ducts, we make them there. Oh, the ducts over there? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we make those things. And then this is also a table for restaurants? Yeah, we are making a table for the, the workbench for the restaurant. Workbench in the restaurants? In the restaurant. This, this is? Canteens. This is stainless steel that we are using. Stainless there. steel, okay. Yeah. Right. Mm. My. So you can make this for restaurants, you can make this for hospitals as well. Restaurants, hospitals, labs, uh, uh, labs, uh, catering companies. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. And those are the same things with the legs over there? Are those uh, 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 on the other table there? The, the legs. Oh, the legs you use this. Mm -hmm. I see. So we can also do 
uh, labs in hospitals. Yes. We did the lab for uh, one of these hospitals, big hospitals around. Which one? Most labs. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to avoid the name, mentioning names. It's good to mention names. But we did the, uh, the lab for most labs. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Are you, are you yet doing mortuaries as well? Not yet. Not yet, but I'm assuming it's the same. We can, yeah. Yeah, can you, can, do you can do most of those. Wow, 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 wow. And then what is this machine? This is a guillotine. <coughs> uh, besides using the plasma cutter there, you can cut our uh, metal sheets manual. This is a guillotine. Aha, yeah. the guillotine. So there are other sheets that we just cut from this. Excellent. Yeah. And then you cut them for what purpose? Various purposes. Uh, say, even when you want to make it here. Oh, so, so for instance, this was cut by the guillotine. Yes. And then you made those boxes over there. Yes. Interesting. So we make meter boards. Uh, get me, get me. We make meter boards here of all types, all the types of meter boards and the distribution boxes. We make them here. Right. And you can see the difference if you go to what we are seeing in the market in Harare. This metal sheet is, uh, say, very thin, but we use the right size here, which is uh, 08. Right. Size 08. Right. Yeah. Then we uh, the make the workmanship there, you can see it? Yes. So, the, in major hardware, high profile hardware, you can get this from us. I see. And then that's where the electrical uh, stuff gets inside. Yes. These are for houses and office buildings. Yes. And that's the smaller one. This one for the, distrib uh, uh, for the distribution. Right. This is the meter one. Right. Yeah. I see some beds over there. We make hospital beds. This is a delivery bed. A delivery bed? Yes. <laughs> we manufactured the amen for Marunda Hospital. Four. Four. Four went to Marunda Hospital last week. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This is also a delivery bed. So that's a delivery bed there. And those are the mattresses? Those so are the mattresses. We make them here. You make the mattresses here as well? Yes. <laughs> so this is where the... The drip? No, the legs. The legs? Oh, no, that's where we're, the legs go in. We are talking of delivery. Uh, I, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Oh, there's another one on the other side there. Yeah. Oh my God, I didn't realize that this is the process. So this, this headboard there yes. is useful for the mother when she wants to crouch or something. Um, she can hold on to that. Hold on to this then like that. So you have to understand that process for you to manufacture this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then on the moral, you husband come and say, you're smiling. <laughs> you, a person like you has made it possible. <laughs> brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Um, I saw desks. In fact, I actually saw them yes, over there. We, we make school furniture. Okay, let's, let's, let's go there and see. School furniture and the desks. Yes. So this is a chair in the making. School chair. A school chair in the making. In the making. Here. Yeah, here. <laughs> and those are desks. Those are desks. All that's left is to put the top. Yes. So what we are trying to do these days are uh, we just put a bracket there. To strengthen it. To strengthen this part. <laughs> What you recognize that they were failing mm -hmm. because of a lack of that. Yeah. Then this is our single desk. Uh, after after COVID, uh, we are now more uh, emphasizing more on the single desk. 
so that students are, are separated from each other. <laughs> Otherwise, we have to make the double. The double. The double I can see the double over there. Yeah. Right. But now at the moment, we are more focused on this one. What are those machines behind? That's a sandpapering machine? That's a sending machine. Sending machine, yes. That's a bender. Uh -huh. a bender. A ba that's the a bender, bend. the blue one. Yeah. Normally when we want to bend these, these bends, this small bend. And this is also, this is steel as well, it's iron. What is this one? Yeah. It's steel. It's steel. Yes. So we also, Zimbabwe also imports this. This steel. And we need to be making our own steel. Yes. What I think is, uh, as much as we want to industrialize as a nation, we also need to have our local hardware supporting local production. Yes. Because I get into a local hardware which is benefiting from monies of this local community. But they're importing the door frames. But they import the door frames. Yet you they can make they a door import things that we can make in Zimbabwe. But the problem is that Zimbabweans are not understanding the concept that you need to buy local to create employment locally so that the locals can have money to buy from your industries and to make your companies bigger. One of the problems I think uh, is, uh, is that uh, we need to look at who owns the big hardware. Because when it is owned by a person who, is, who has no concern for Zimbabwe, it means that we ourselves should actually uh, maybe conglomerate so that we make this big address ourselves. I'm hoping that you can hear what the gentleman is saying, a very clear message, that it is very important that products that are being manufactured by Zimbabweans find their way into hardwares that are owned by Zimbabweans in order to grow the Zimbabwean economy. A lot of times we complain that there are no jobs. We complain about the problems in the economy, but we are failing to support the businesses that are creating the jobs by manufacturing in the country, by not giving them a distribution outlet. Then we get imports coming into the country and they destroy our jobs because once you import this, you have exported the jobs that could have made this door here overseas. And as a country under sanctions, it's very important for us to be loyal to local manufacturers like him. You saw the machinery that he's uh, invested into and for him to pay back that machinery, for him to pay his staff, for him to employ more, he needs to sell more of these doors. And uh, look at it that we are in Machina and East here. And uh, if uh, all of Zimbabwe can buy from this place, it means our GDP in Machina and East is going to increase. And this is a very important point that he's making, that we want to industrialize this country. We want to industrialize Zimbabwe. And if we're going to industrialize Zimbabwe, we've got to put an effort to industrialize the rural community, to make sure that our rural folk have work. And this is why you said you came here to be a farmer, mm -hmm. but while you're farming, you brought your industry with you because you're not going to be going to Harare all the time. Yes. That's a beautiful Zimbabwe story. And I think we need to use that as a model to develop our country. Now, if you ever believe the lie that they always tell us, that sanctions are targeted and they do not affect businesses and you, the ordinary Zimbabwean, you need this education. Do you ever struggle to get parts to repair your machines? We, we are struggling to have um, support. Support? Yeah, yeah, mainly because maybe of the how people see Zimbabwe. Yes. You go, you buy a machine from uh, a certain group of people. Yes. Then if they are supposed now to come and give us support. Yes, they don't. Then they start uh, dodging around. They think Zimbabwe is not uh, a place to visit. Is it, is it chances that it's also sanctions that are causing that? Yeah, I think so. So replacement parts become a problem. Replacement so, parts we can have, but sometimes you need a technical person. To come and do the job. Fly in and actually sort out a, a machine problem. But they don't so do that. So that, that, that becomes a bit of a problem. Last time we wanted to bring a certain old man from South Africa. 
then I don't know who told him that he, Zimbabwean people are not good at all. So he so didn't come? He was, he was actually uh, asking around. Then he was convinced by other Zimbabweans that I had been. No, you can go, it's a nice place. Then that's when he, he could come. But uh, many people may not want to, to come. So it takes us time to say we get someone to come and help us when we've got a major issue. And those are all things that affect production in this country. Mm. The negative perception, the sanctions, and the negative perception and sanctions are one and the same thing. We're at war. And there are nations that want to make Zimbabwe sound dysfunctional. They want to make it difficult for us to do business. And these are the challenges that he's telling us. That you'll have a machine, but the technical support, the people that can come and replace the parts or fix the machine won't be willing to come to Zimbabwe. And sometimes that delays them from repairing a machine and continuing their production. Yes. Mr. Tsandukwa is in control of his supply chain as he doesn't need to take all his products to market all at once since he has a lot of room in his factory backyard. I could not believe the amount of stock that he's carrying of finished goods and nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. It was a hardware shop at the factory. So this is our uh, hardware. We are trying to make solutions for our local community so that we don't go far uh, from our local place. My, my thinking is that uh, we are not yet awake in our community. We think that the rural places do not have money. Whereas, uh, when I came here with the uh, services and products, we found that the money is here. People are only looking for quality things. So, you are saying that you can actually sell everything that you've got here in this community yes. and make your money? Yes. The perception that rural folk don't have money is a lie. Yes, they are actually spending more money by getting into town to buy their fertilizers, to buy their tankstands, to buy everything else, their chemicals and so on. So if they can go to Marondi, right, they, they can go to Harare, it means the money is there. What we now need to do is to bring the product closer home. So we are also saying if you are, you are a, a child of a certain boy who is here, you are saying you are in the UK, you can, you can pay us online, then we can come and collect things from you. What, what kind of things do you have? All agriculture. You see, we have got the there with the seed, we have got fertilizers, we have got chicken <coughs> feed, chicken feed there. Uh, we have got the agrochemicals. You've got your own products. We have got our own products like those uh, arrows that you saw, you saw from the walls. Yeah. yeah, the walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some we are buying from someone else. Uh -huh. Yeah. These are found here. Right. Shovels. Uh, electrical uh, items there, mm -hmm. then agrochemicals we, we have from there. We also have wetsuits. We we are doing sewing somewhere. You shall see the sewing department. Another sewing department. Yeah. So some of the things that we may sell here may come from our sewing department. <laughs> I think, guys, we've seen a beautiful story here with this industry and factory that's taking place. And I think one thing that he has made very clear to me today is that when you are doing metal work at wood at school, woodwork at school, sewing at school, those skills where you use your hands, that's where the future is. A lot of times here in Zimbabwe, we begin to look down upon those kind of uh, vocations. But from what he is telling me, he has been able to secure his own life, make money, and build more because of using his hands and utilizing his skills to create an industry and a business. And to the wholesalers in Zimbabwe, you need to support businesses like his to allow them to grow, employ more people, pay more taxes, and that way we can begin to industrialize our country. And the good story is that Manize is coming online next year, and let's hope that that iron and steel is going to make people like him grow even bigger into the become bigger businesses. And just when I thought that I had seen it all, we left the hardware to go and see the canteen that Mr. Sandukwa is running. And in it, 
almost all the appliances that he's using in his canteen are reverse engineered where he takes appliances from other companies and then reverse engineers them to produce his own products locally in Zimbabwe. It's an absolute marvel to see that business people in Zimbabwe are able to reverse engineer in what is called the flying goose effect that developed Japan and China. This gives me great hope. This is a chip fryer. It's one of the products that we, that we make. So almost everything that you're using here, you're making for yourself? Yeah, with the, uh, we get 50% <coughs> of the things that we make. <laughs> yeah. Now imagine that. 50% of the things that they use in the, in the secondary businesses are coming from the main factory. And they're coming here in practical terms. Chip fry, chip warmer, chip warmer. the Ben Marie's. Ben Marie's. Ben and we're not done. We are not done. This is the stove. You make the stove as well. We make this stove from scratch. You make this stove from scratch? Yes. We made it here. This one? Yes. You made this here? Yes. So this is the oven. <laughs> wow. 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 This is this is hospitality standard equipment yes. that you are making here. Yes, in a rural area. Yes. I'm blown away. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I, now now you've taken me to another level. <laughs> so this one is a, a three plate industrial cooker. We can have four plates. Uh, it uses three phase electricity. Wow. Mm. So it's suitable for uh, thick canteens. Say when we are talking of uh, the army, um, universities, boarding schools, and some rest of it. Hotels. Now guys, I think this is time for us to have a discussion man to man. The man doesn't have an engineering degree, but he was able to start a business that manufactures this kind of equipment. Then you have an engineering degree. You have got a master's degree. But you're on the streets complaining about the fact that government is not creating you a job. But there's a man. He makes this. He studied accounting. We have to change our mindset. We have to change the way we think. Because what he's saying is that this can be done in Zimbabwe, in a rural community. So you've got no excuse. I've got no excuse. But he's also showing me that great things are happening in Zimbabwe. Ingenuity is happening in Zimbabwe. And I think today was a blessing for us to come and share this kind of story where you are teaching us the magnitude of things that are happening in this economy. I'm grateful. Well, guys, there is nothing else left to say. But if this story doesn't challenge you to move out of your comfort zone, then there is no redemption for you who keeps complaining about things that you have the power to change in your own community. This man has a top-tier school in which five and six-year-olds have learned to bring solutions to problems in their communities and they produce products that they sell to their communities. He's created a farming project where he's got crops and he looks after animals and his students are learning after him. You need to learn from this man. And watch out for the second part of the documentary as we delve deeper into other projects that Mr. Tsandukwa is building. Building out of a vision that he brought through to the Bonongwe community to bring change and to bring solutions to their problems. Soon, he will turn Bonongwe into a thriving town after it started off as a rural community with a manufacturing consent. Telling the Good Zimbabwe Story with Rutendo Martinara. Catch you on the next episode.